Good evening. I'm Willis Cooper. Tonight, when you look through this little window that opens from your living room onto a new world, you'll find yourself an unseen watcher in a great astronomical observatory high up on a mountaintop. But I think I could reasonably promise you that you'll have an interesting half hour. Please don't change the adjustment of your receiver. If you can see me clearly, the story that follows will be equally clear. Are you ready now? Are the children asleep? Are the neighbors comfortable? Here's volume one, number four. place to sit down here. We never sit down. We're busy. Too busy to shake hands, Reed. Still hate me, don't you? I never hated you, Ruth. What can I do for you, Senator? It, it's cold up here. I'm sorry. It's always cold up here. We're 8,000 feet above sea level up here. I know. Can't you close that door? No. I see. You're going to be difficult, just as you always were. This is an astronomical observatory, Senator. Our primary interest is out there, not in here. Door to the sky. I suppose so. It's a wonderful view. The seeing isn't very good tonight. Isn't it? No, it, please don't lean over. It's a straight drop off there. More than a mile straight down. Is that Pasadena down there? Yes. All the light. It's breath. Taking read. Yes. What are those other lights? Well, that's San Fernando. That's Van Nuys. Over there is Los Angeles. And that's Santa Monica. Remember Santa Monica, Reed. I remember Santa Monica. What can I do for you, Senator? How well do you remember Santa Monica? I've tried to forget it. I've got other things to remember. You've got what you wanted, haven't you? Yes. You have two, haven't you? Have I? Aren't you glad to see me, Ree? Do you want a straight answer to that, Senator? Never mind. You've answered me. You happy, Reed? Very. Were you surprised to see me? No. You weren't? I heard you were coming yesterday. We're on an inspection tour. My committee in the Senate. I know. 
What do you expect to find out? Me? Your committee. Oh, all about science. You know, astrophysics and everything. What are you going to do with what you learn? If I'm not being too inquisitive. I'm sure I don't know. Something to do with war or something. National defense, we call it. And what? What? Never mind. The stars in their courses, Spice. What are you looking at? I doubt that you'd understand, Senator. I didn't come up here to be insulted, Reed. Then I'd suggest you go someplace else, Senator. Oh, stop calling me Senator. All right. You don't have to be quite so disagreeable, you know. I'm often disagreeable to uninvited guests. You're very good looking in that outfit, Reed. Like a man from Mars or somewhere. And the pretty white scar. Very effective, Reed. Where'd you get it, Reed? You never wore things like that in the old days at Santa Monica. Can I smoke? Professor? We don't smoke up here. I smoke. Senators smoke wherever they want to. Be careful with that match. It's very easy to start a forest fire up here. Come here. Come and sit down beside me. I want to hear about this place, everything you do here. Please. I promise just to ask official questions, Reed. All right. How long have you been up here, Reed? Eight years. Is that important? It is to you, isn't it? Only because I've been engaged in some important work. Looking at the stars every night. I said you wouldn't understand, Senator. You'll forgive me, my dear. You and I have different ideas about what's important. We've had different ideas about that for a long time, haven't we? Shall we talk about what seems important to me? This committee I'm chairman of, Reed, is a very highly secret committee. We... We don't know anything about science. They... They made me chairman, you see, because of you. They knew I'd been married to you once. You're still married to me. Oh, yes, of course, legally, but... Uh, but you're a senator. And you're a scientist, so I'm chairman of the committee. Now, oh, I shouldn't have done that, should I? Oh, we haven't had a forest fire up here for some time. Forest fires must be thrilling. In a way. Go on, please. Well, you know, scientists can be very useful to us in wartime. You've no idea how useful we are. I'm sure we scientists are very happy to hear we're useful, Senator. You really are. I was talking to a general the other day, a very important general, by the way, and Are he... generals really as stuffy as they look? Generals aren't... Well, some of them are. I suppose they're very respectful to senators. Well, the thing is, we feel that scientists can be even more useful to the country. 
Now read, please. I didn't say anything. Yes, I, but I know that look. Now just listen to me. There must be a lot of things you know that we don't know. We want to know. What, for example? Well, um... <laughs> well, you tell me. <laughs> oh, just the highlights, we really. Just the important things. For instance, um, what are all those gadgets over there for? What do you do with all these things? Where are you going? I can't go very far. I'd land in Colorado Street, in Pasadena down there. Oh. Reed. Reed. Don't you ever get lonesome? No. You do. It's a terribly lonely life. You asked for it. Oh, I, I don't mean my life. I'm thinking about you. So you are. I've been very happy in Washington. But I've missed you. I missed you. Did you, Reed? But I got over it. You sure? Quite sure. I'm sorry, Ruth. But that's the way it is. I'm sorry. Some people would be very happy to be married to a senator. You, you were going to show me what all these gadgets are for. Now, please. Thank you. This is the control that moves the dome. And here are the switches for the azimuth and declination motor. And this is the master control for our observation instruments. The telescopes? No, not telescopes. Not telescopes anymore. We make our observations with a combination of... <coughs> I won't violate security if I tell you, I suppose. <laughs> oh, I probably wouldn't understand it anyway. We use electronic telescopes now. Like radar? A little. Television? I'm sure all the technical details can be made available to you in Washington, Senator. Of course. I understand there's some very interesting astrophysical laboratories in Washington. I'm not going to Washington, Ruth. Aren't you? No. I'm staying right... I like this scarf, Reed. I'd like to have it. I'm afraid I need it. You wouldn't need it in Washington. It's fortunate, then, that I'm not going to Washington. Isn't it, Senator? I wouldn't be so sure if I were you. <laughs> you see, my committee... Did I tell you I'm chairman of my committee? We might find we need you in Washington. And you couldn't afford to turn us down, could you, Reed? If we sort of drafted you? Because, you see, if you did turn us down, Reed, we couldn't let you keep your job here. Could we? Ruth, you... So you see... You'll be quite a sensation in Washington, darling, in your nice blue uniform and your nice white scarf. I'd be so proud of you, dear. You're a frightening person, Ruth. Am I? I don't mean to be. You always were a frightening person. 
I remember you used to frighten me when you were just a plain little housewife. When we lived in a bungalow court on Arizona Street, over there in Santa Monica. Babysitting for other people. Why, you studied the stars. You used to hate people, so. I still hate so many people. I remember the night you cut your hand on the wine glass. I remember the day I lost my job. At the tennis club. And I brought home a bottle of wine. I paid 17 cents for a bottle of wine. And we sat at the table after dinner trying to find some comfort in a 17 cent bottle of wine. Listening to the man next door playing the piano when you and I were young, Maddie. And you sat there for the longest time, not saying anything. And then you got up and went across to the window and looked out. And you said, Someday I'm going to know what it is to have power. I'm going to know you. When that day comes, and then you smashed your glass down on the windowsill, and you cut your hand, and you bled. That frightened you, did it? Now I've got the power, Reed. And I'm going to have more. But not enough to take me away from here. I'm going to stay here! They won't let you read. It is now about 6.15 hours, Greenwich Mean Time. What are you going to do? Stand aside, please. I've got work to do. What's that? Will you stand aside, please? Explanation and azimuth, please, on the electronic for the great nebula, Zeta Orionis. Right. What in the world? Equivalent focus of electronic objective, 140.55 meters. Stand by. If you want to see, stand over here. Back here, look out for the screen. But the telescope... Radar screen, Senator. Stand back, please. Look out for the screen. Screen down. Stand by. Lights out. You asked me what we do up here. I'm showing you. Yes, but, but what is it? That's 
the Great Nebula. The light from it started from there 70 years ago. Is it... Is... Is that up there in the sky? 70 light years away. 70 light years above us. But, but what is it? I don't know. Oh, but you must know. You have to know. No man on this earth knows. Is it... Is it another world? There are uncounted millions of other worlds up there. Oh, but that black sea. That black space. I don't know. Like the head of a wild horse. A cloud of cold cosmic dust. Twenty million times bigger than our sun. Oh, no. And 70 light years away from this world. Oh! Go out on the catwalk, Ruth, and look down at the lights of Pasadena. That's a mile straight down. And then look up at Orion the Mighty Hunter and the Wild Horse. That's 400 trillion miles away from this little world in which your soul power. And it frightens you. It doesn't frighten you. No. No. I've got friends up there. You are frightened. Well, it, it moved. 400 trillion miles away, Senator. And it frightens you. Turn it off, Reed. Turn it off. I can turn it off. Turn it off. I can turn it off. I can turn it off, Senator. But it'll still be there. Come and look. You won't take me away from here. They won't let you, Senator. Reed, Reed, come away from here. No. Oh, oh, Reed. This is where I belong. Reed. They won't let me go. Oh, Reed. Will you? Reed, stop this. No, Ruth. You can't take me away from here. And you can't do the other things you want. Somebody will stop you. Reed, Reed, if you ever loved me. It's too late now, Ruth. No, 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 no. No. You're powerful. I agree. You have almost everything you want. But your power is a this earth. And when you try to reach out farther. But Reed. There are other worlds. There are uncounted millions of other worlds. <laughs> You're not going to find out from us scientists how to send a rocket out into space to be a cosmic gun platform to rain down death and destruction on this Earth. I know your plan, Senator. We all know your plan. And we won't let you carry them out. But science... But science... Science, Senator. Can either destroy this world or make this world a paradise. But science hasn't made up its mind yet. Won't you believe that I love you? That I want to take you away from this? Because Why? I love you. I've got a new love. And my new love won't let you have it. 
My new love is a jealous love, Ruth. And she doesn't frighten me. You fool. You utter fool. You think you can say that to me. You can frighten me for a moment with your tricks. You can laugh at the lightning and thunder and let me make a sniveling idiot of all of myself. You can give me your fine hero talk and your talk about four billion light years and your friends from the sky who won't let you do, won't let me do what I want to. <laughs> your new love. Let's see your new love help you now. You've made a fool of me, now listen to me. Oh, no. I said listen to me. You'll find out what it means to refuse me. I gave you your chance. Too late. I'll tell you who it's too late for. It's too late for you. You'll find out what it means to refuse me. I told you what I can do and I'll do it. You'll say no to me. I'll ruin you. You're done. Do you hear me? You're done. You'll leave this place. You'll find out what it means to defy me. You're done. You're done. Get out. Get out. Now get out. Let's see if your new love can save you now. Technical director on tonight's show was George Weber. Be sure to watch your ABC station for our next episode, volume one, number five. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.